In the last lecture, we have started studying about pushdown automata and we have also seen a brief introduction to pushdown automata. And in this lecture, we will be seeing about the formal definition of pushdown automata and we shall see how pushdown automata is formally defined and what they mean. All right. So, a pushdown automata is formally defined by seven tuples as shown below. If you remember, when we studied finite automata, it was defined using five tuples, but in case of pushdown automata, it is defined using seven tuples, and let's see what they are. It is given by P equal to Q, Sigma, capital letter Gamma or uppercase Gamma, and Del, Q naught, Z naught, and F. Let's see what these tuples mean. Here Q, it is a finite set of states. So this is same like that of the finite automata where Q is representing a set of states. And then Sigma is a finite set of input symbols. So this is also same like our finite automata where Sigma was used to represent our set of input symbols. And then we have uppercase gamma or capital letter gamma which represents a finite stack alphabet. So this is something which was not there in our finite automata and I told you even in the previous lecture what makes the pushdown automata different from the finite automata is the presence of a stack and the stack is what makes pushdown automata more powerful than the finite automata and then this capital letter gamma or uppercase gamma is a tuple that is used to denote the finite stack alphabets or the symbols that are present in the stack. And then we have del which represents a transition function and if you remember in the finite automata also we had del which represents a transition function and the transition function had a specific meaning and even in this pushdown automata also this transition function will have a specific meaning which I will be explaining as we go further and Q0 is the start state. This is also same like our finite automata where Q0 represents the start state or the initial state and then Z0 it represents the start stack symbol. So this is also something that was not there in case of finite automata. So in case of pushdown automata as I already taught you we are having a stack in this and then Z0 it represents the first symbol or the start symbol that is present in the stack. And then finally we have F which is the set of final state or accepting states. So this is also same like our finite automata where the letter F is used to denote the set of final states or accepting states. So I hope those tuples were clear to you. Now we need to talk about the transition function which is denoted by del. So let us see what this transition function means and how is it actually defined. So the transition function which is denoted by del, it takes as arguments a triple which are q, a and x. So it takes three arguments namely q, a and x and let's see what this means. First one is q. q is a state in capital Q. So I already told you that Q, this capital Q, it represents the set of states and this small letter Q, it just denotes one of the states from the set of states that we have in Q. And then A. A is either an input symbol in sigma or A is equal to epsilon. So that means that this A, it could be an input symbol from our set of input symbols that we have or it can also be epsilon that means it can also be an empty symbol so this a can either be an input symbol or it can be just an empty symbol then we have x x is a stack symbol that is a member of gamma so i told you gamma is the finite stack alphabet the set of alphabets that we have in the stack and x is symbol that is present in the stack now let us see an example of this so that it will become more clear to us. Now the output of del, it is a finite set of pair given by P and small letter or lowercase gamma. This symbol is a 
lower case gamma. So the output of transition function del it is given by a set of pairs given by p and gamma. So I told you that the transition function it takes these three arguments q, a, and x and it gives an output of the form p gamma. And let's see what this p and gamma means. P is a new state. So P is a new state from a set of states. And let's see what is gamma. Gamma is a string of stack symbols that replaces X at the top of the stack. So in our input or in our argument, initially we had X, which was a symbol from our stack. And then this gamma, which comes as an output of the transition function, it is a symbol that replaces this X from the top of the stack. Now let's see an example to make it more clear. So if we have gamma equal to epsilon, then it means that the stack is popped. Now what do we mean by this? So let's say that initially this transition function del, it took these three arguments q, a and x and it gave the output p and gamma. And p is any state and then in case of gamma, if gamma happens to be epsilon that means the stack is popped. So what do I mean by popped? I already taught you in the previous lecture that popping an element from a stack means removing an element from the stack. So if we have a stack and if all the elements are removed then what do we have in the stack? We have nothing left in the stack. So epsilon means it is empty. So if gamma equal to epsilon that means the stack is popped. That means the elements in the stack was removed and it is empty. And now what if our gamma is equal to x? Then it means that the stack is unchanged. Now why is this? This is because initially we knew that the symbol or the element in the stack was x. And then the output that we get is gamma. And if gamma is equal to x, that means the element in the stack is unchanged. We did not make any change in the stack because initially it was x and finally also gamma is equal to x. So if gamma is equal to x that means the stack is unchanged. And finally if we have gamma equal to yz then it means that x is replaced by z and y is pushed onto the stack. So if we take this as the initial argument if this was the argument that we have in our transition function and as an output, if we get gamma equal to yz, that means that x is replaced by z and y is pushed on to the stack. This means that initially x was the topmost element of the stack. And then if we get yz, that means x was popped or x was replaced by z. And then y is pushed on to the stack. And what do I mean by pushed? I taught you in the last lecture that pushing an element into the stack means inserting an element onto the top of the stack. So initially we had x and x was replaced by z and then y was pushed onto the stack. So on the top of the stack we have y and below that we have z which replaced x. So that is what we can understand by the kind of gamma that we get in our output of the transition function. So I hope that was clear to you. That is how the transition function works and those are the seven tuples that are used to denote a pushdown automata. Now this was a formal definition of pushdown automata and from the next lecture we will be taking examples which will make it more clear to you. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.